Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be doing one of my favorite videos I do on my channel quite often, which is a Sephora haul. I haven't done one in a minute, but you know, I never stop actually placing orders on Sephora. I'm somebody that's continually just opening up the app and looking at the new adding to cart. I have a lot of makeup products to share with you. I'm wearing a ton on my face, and then I did go a little wild in the fragrance department, but I found some new favorites, so I do wanna share those as well. I'm also super excited to say this video is sponsored by Sephora, which is just a pinch me moment. I think we all know by now that I'm a Sephora gal at heart, so anytime I can work with them, I'm just super excited. So because I'm an avid shopper on Sephora, I am a Rouge member, but if you haven't signed up to be a beauty insider, it's completely free. It gives you access to discounts and promotions and other perks that are completely free, and it's super easy to sign up. So I will leave the link to sign up to become a beauty insider at the top of my description box. I highly recommend doing so. Your points add up every time you make a purchase. You get birthday samples and just a ton of other perks like shopping the savings events that Sephora holds a couple times a year. So if you haven't already signed up to be a beauty insider, all the information will be down below so you can do that now. I also will link all the products that I haul today down below in my description box if there's anything you wanna check out. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and if you enjoy Sephora hauls, please give this video a thumbs up and without further ado let's get into what I picked up from Sephora so I want to do things a little differently and start out with fragrance I went a little crazy okay I have really been into fragrance lately I'm trying to find all the hidden gems and just different fragrances for my collection. Especially since we're going into summer, I'm moving away from my gourmand cozy scents into more fun, bright scents that are really juicy and floral. But I did splurge on a fragrance that my friend Cheryl was raving about. I picked up the travel size and then I loved it so much I had to get the full size. So this is the Clean Reserve Skin Fragrance. I went ahead and got the full size bottle. How gorgeous is this bottle? This is such a beautiful musk scent. I really feel like this would be beautiful on anyone. It really just smells like skin like somebody that just has that beautiful musky scent naturally. The notes I will put on the screen, but it is just absolutely perfection in terms of a musk scent. There's vanilla, salted praline, fresh musk. I mean, it really is heavy on the musk. One thing I like about this is it's a very soft scent, so it can be mixed with other fragrances. If you wanted to use this as a base and then add something else, it just brings a really soft feel to it. Now, I will say you do have to reapply this because it is a musk. It is very soft. This is not one that's going to give you a headache or anything like that. It's really one of those that lingers on the skin, but very softly. So if you want like a really, really intense fragrance, this is probably not going to be it. But if you want something that is just sweet, musky, cozy, like fresh skin with a heavy musk, you must try this out. Thank you, Cheryl, for the recommendation. I adore this fragrance. So this next fragrance is more of a floral scent, which I typically don't go for. I originally picked up the Valentino Born in Roma Coral Fantasy and I fell in love. That one is more of a fruity floral, but a lot of you were telling me to try this and I went ahead and picked up the original Valentino Born in Roma. This is so fun and bright for summer. Somehow it works even though I typically do not love a floral. This is a warm floral. This is more of a strong fragrance for me, a couple sprays and it would be good for the day. Whereas the Clean Reserve, I could like douse my body in it. So this has black currant, jasmine, but then it also has vanilla and I think that's what gives it the hint of sweetness. It's definitely sweet, but it's definitely a floral. It's not a headache inducing floral, but it is very floral bright, just floral with a little bit of like, feels kind of like a musky vanilla base. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous scent. I love the packaging and I am crazy for the Coral Fantasy. So now I'm like really into the Valentino perfumes and I need to try more. As many of you probably saw, including myself, this fragrance from Floor called Missing Person 
was going crazy viral on TikTok about a month or two ago. It was very hard to get. I finally got my hands on it and I did pick up the travel spray just to give it a try. Now everybody was going crazy saying this was very nostalgic, giving them sort of like a comforting feel, almost like memories from their childhood. Now they described this as a warm and sheer fragrance with key notes of skin musk, bergamot nectar, and blonde wood, which I thought sounded really good. And I have to say, I like this fragrance, but it's not anywhere near a favorite of mine, let's say, like the Clean Reserve. This one is very hard to describe. I could see what people are saying about it in terms of it's almost like your childhood a little bit. It definitely has a musk to it, but there's a twist to it. And I don't know if it's because it has a white musk or it has that blonde wood. This is definitely a sweet scent. It is musky and I would say it's very soft. But if I had to choose, I would definitely reach for the Clean Reserve 100%. There's just something about this that definitely almost feels like, I don't know, the smell of your Barbies when you're little or like a doll, like a Cabbage Patch doll sort of smell. So I like it. There is something very comforting about it. I don't know if I feel like it's my favorite ever, but it's something that I'll use and I think it's just like a nice soft everyday scent. It is quite subtle, kind of like the Clean Reserve, one that you have to kind of reapply but I really had to get my hands on this because everybody was going crazy about it. So along with Missing Person, I picked up another fragrance from Floor, which is called Floria. I've not heard anyone talk about this, but I really like this and it's a little bit different for my personal collection. The key notes are bergamot, golden gardenia, and sandalwood. But it also says that this is sparkling citrus, it's youthful, it says it has warm woods in it. There's something really special about this fragrance it is quite strong so again very similar to the Valentino in the sense that two or three sprays and I'm good but it is just almost like a beachy green floral if that makes sense it's sweet but it has a little bit of that green sort of floral, I think, so it's not anything like a rose floral. And because it has that citrus element and the woody element, it really smells like a beachy floral to me. I really, really enjoy this. I like this more than the missing person, and this is definitely different from my collection. It's not that rose headache-inducing floral, but more of like a citrus, beachy, summertime floral, and I really love it. The last fragrance I picked up is actually a perfume mist. This is from Sol de Janeiro. Again, this went viral on TikTok. I get sucked in just like the rest of you. So this is the Brazilian Jasmine and Pink Dragon Fruit Body and Hair Mist. This is very, very, very similar to Baccarat Rouge 540. I mean, it is so, so similar. If you have been wanting to try Baccarat, but you don't wanna spend, you know, hundreds of dollars, I highly recommend grabbing this. They describe this as a fruity floral, and the key notes are Brazilian Jasmine, Pink Dragon Fruit, and Sheer Vanilla. This is just very, very similar to me, but essentially in a body spray. And these last quite well on me. I actually tried the Sol de Janeiro fragrance and I thought that the body mist lasts just as well. And I have quite a few of these. Just a very fruity, sweet scent. I'm kind of realizing that a lot of scents that I'm loving for summer have jasmine in them. So maybe I need to really start looking for that as a keynote, but I'm really happy with this purchase. I think it smells incredible. Speaking of smelling incredible, I picked up a couple more products from Sol de Janeiro. The first one being their milky leave-in conditioner for your hair. So, you know, anything that smells like the Boom Boom Cream, I have to have it. I just love the scent, and I really love a lot of the scents that Sol de Janeiro comes out with. So this is supposed to hydrate, detangle, it says it's supposed to protect your hair from heat. Let me tell you, this smells incredible. I used this a couple days ago and it smells just like the Boom Boom Cream. It was quite light. I used maybe 10 spritzes and I didn't feel there was like a film or anything on my hair. And it's a pretty big size as well. I'm really excited to see what other products they release in different scents. I love the Boom Boom scent. I'm loving that new fragrance mist and I would love to see just more body products, hair products. And I think they just knock it out of the park with the scents. So 
So I will keep using this, but so far I really liked it. The scent lingered in my hair. I'm a huge fan of their dry shampoo just to kind of give me like a hair perfume type of vibe. Just keep my hair smelling really nice. So that's why I picked this up and I think it smells incredible as I thought it would. I also picked up a body product from Fenty Skin and this is the Butta Drop Whipped Oil Body Cream. This is a huge <laughs> jar of this. I recently fell in love with the Cookies and Clean Mask because it was fragrance free and I just really loved it for my pores and texture. So I was browsing and I wanted to try more from Fenty Skin and this had amazing reviews. This is thick, okay? It is thick, moisturizing. I used it today on my decollete and it has a really light scent to it, nothing overpowering. So you could mix this with any fragrance and it's not going to you know, interfere. It has a really thick consistency. I am a huge fan of their intensive hand mask as well. So I've really had great luck with Fenty Skin in general. It makes me wanna try more. What really drew me in was the whipped oil body cream. Anything infused with oil, I feel like is gonna be really, really hydrating. And because I love the intensive hand mask so much, it really intrigued me to try this out. I love the packaging and so far I'm really enjoying it. I also picked up a hair product I had seen here and there, but I really wanted to try it for myself and I've used it quite a few times. This is from a brand called K18 and this is the Leave-In Molecular Repair Hair Mask. So they have a mini size, they also have the full size. I did pick up the mini. It is quite pricey, but a little goes a long way. I was really intrigued because I love Olaplex and it seemed like it was gonna be similar to the number three hair mask. So this is a leave-in treatment mask for all hair types and it reverses damage in four minutes. So essentially you just wash your hair, do everything normally, and then you take one pump, maybe two, work it through your hair that's damp and then let your hair sit for four minutes, style as usual. I really, really like this. I feel like it gives me that sleek look, very very soft look. To me, it almost feels like a creamy version of the Color Wow Dream Coat that I really love. It just makes my hair very soft. I feel like it smooths my split ends. I don't know in terms of like reversing damage. I don't really have damaged hair except for breakage that I get from doing my hair like this, which I can't stop doing. But I really like this because I feel like it's easy. I just pump two pumps in, you know, do my makeup and then dry my hair. And I do feel like it makes my hair really silky. So, so far I'm enjoying it. The price tag's a little high, but you honestly need one or two pumps. It's not something that you need to use the whole bottle for a treatment, so I'm really liking it so far. All right, so now let's jump into the makeup. I got uh, a crazy amount of blushes and then some other products, so let's start off with this really interesting product that I really wanna review, and I did use it today, and I have to say, I really like it so far. So this is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. Blurring Balm Powder. So I really didn't know what to expect with this. The packaging's super cool. It does have a little spatula so that you can get the product out. And I love that it's on the packaging so you don't lose it. And then when you open it up, this is what it looks like. So this comes in, I believe, a shade called Universal, which is just translucent, and then tinted shades. So I picked up the shade three. So I had heard so many people either really love this or it didn't work for them. It's described as a texture reducing, coverage boosting, blurring balm that balances oils throughout the day while maintaining hydration. So it is a light coverage, natural finish with a cream formulation. And it's interesting that you can use this in so many different ways. A lot of the people that really enjoyed it in my comment section told me to use it as a primer. So that's what I did today. And I just took a little bit on my T-zone and I do have to say I feel like it did fill in my pores. It worked very similarly to how any pore smoothing primer would work. It did have a little bit of coverage, which you'll see in the demo. I would also like to try this all over as well for like a no makeup makeup kind of day but I am not oily at all. I didn't feel like it was heavy. It's a very thin formula. It's very, very emollient. Like the second you touch it, you get that pigment, 
but it's a very thin texture. So it's not something that's heavy or gonna add like a layer of heaviness under your makeup. So, so far, I'm actually having a good experience with this, which I was a little nervous about, but this will be coming in more videos when we do like trying new makeups. So now let's move into my favorite category. It's gonna be very apparent when you see how many blushes I purchased, but I had seen so many blushes that I was like, you know what, add to cart. I need to try them. So the first one is the Laura Mercier Blush Color Infusion in the color Strawberry. It's a beautiful matte baby doll pink shade. It's just a very easy, pretty pink to build up, and I am a huge fan of baby doll colors. Now, when I applied this, I feel like it's a little bit more subdued. It's not quite as punchy as I was anticipating. Also, it could be that I have self-tan on, so that definitely could make it appear a little bit lighter. This is a really easy formula. It's not overly pigmented to where I feel like I couldn't blend it out or I had to be really careful. It's more of a buildable formula. I've tried this formula in the past, but I hadn't tried a color that really was like my perfect baby doll shade, which is shades like this. So I'm really excited to have this and try it more. I am a blush fanatic, so I need all the baby pink blushes. I also picked up this blush from Hourglass. This is the Ambient Lighting Blush in Sublime Flush. Now this is a similar color to the Laura Mercier, but this one actually does have a shimmer to it. So I did apply this as well today. You know, I applied like three blushes. I just kept sort of playing around. This is a very light pink blush. It definitely has a shimmer to it, but people really love the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders and blushes because it's not like glittery and it's not texture inducing. It just gives you a really nice glow. This was again, not as bright as I thought. It was a little bit more soft. So I went in with another blush that I'm gonna show you to really punch up my cheeks. But this is a very easy everyday soft pink tone. And it has a little bit of lilac through it, which is really what drew me in. I feel like we're seeing a lot of very cool tone pink blushes recently, like the Dior Backstage Pink Blush, which is one of my favorites. I don't know how I missed this one or if I haven't tried it in a long time. I got sucked in when I saw somebody use this, I believe on Instagram, and I was like, okay, add to cart. So I also went a little crazy and picked up three of the Sephora Collection blushes. Now these had gone viral because I believe Kylie Jenner's makeup artist said that he used these products or Kim's makeup artist. I'm sure they all work with the same people. This is not a new product and I feel like I've maybe tried one of these way back when, but I picked up three different shades. I have to tell you, I used this shade today gorgeous. I just used it to punch up my cheeks because I love a bright blush. This did it for me. So this is the shade Hey Jealousy, and it's a really bright pink, almost like a raspberry. And this one is definitely pigmented, so a little goes a long way, but it is just absolutely stunning. I pulled it all the way up and then over my nose. This is a matte formula. These are not powdery at all, which I like. They're not messy, they're not dusting all over the place, and the price, you cannot beat it. And then I did pick up the one that everybody was going crazy for. This is called Flirt It Up. So this is more of a like coral pink, lighter, everyday type shade. I have not used this yet. I think this is gonna be a favorite for me as well, just because I tend to go for colors like that. And then I did pick up one in the color Heated. Now this shade does have a shimmer to it, but it doesn't look chunky by any means. This is definitely a pink color, but it's a little bit more subdued and not as like bright or fun as the other two shades. This one looks like it almost has that sort of like mauve undertone, maybe like you've been in the sun a little bit. So I'm excited to give this one a try, but I am loving the first shade I use called Hey Jealousy. It really just punched up my blush. And then the final blushes I picked up were more shades from the one size blush trios. These are the Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trios. So I picked up this shade. I thought it would be very similar to maybe like the Patrick Tosh Shiso LA. This is called Rich Betch. <laughs> the names on these are, you know, quite interesting. So this has a shimmer sort of topper and then a matte powder and then you have a cream with the flap. Now I have, I think four now, four of these, you know, somebody stop me. I don't know if this is gonna be too dark for me. This formula is insanely pigmented from the ones I've tried. 
very, very pigmented, so not buildable, more of like use a light hand. But I thought this could be a really pretty, almost like a bronzed, again, like in the sun type of color. I don't know if this is gonna be too deep for me, but I, it was hard to tell online and I just wanted to grab another one. And then the one I'm most excited about, this is called Fat, Fat Ass, which <laughs> the names on these, again, I mean, Patrick Starr created this brand, so I can't say I'm surprised. It's pretty self-explanatory why I wanted this color. It's just a beautiful pink color. And then you do have the topper that has this really pretty, like orange peachy vibe to it. So I really wanted to get my hands on this shade. And then I ended up just adding more to cart. I really love the packaging on this and the colors are really beautiful. I love the ones that I tried so far. I tried the really bright one and then the more subdued one. So I have two more colors now to play with. This is probably gonna be my favorite just because these tones are what I love. So let's talk lip products. I have a combination on, but I wanna start out with two lip liners that I picked up. So I grabbed another shade of the Makeup by Mario Ultra Suede Lip Pencil, and this is in Toasty. I am a huge fan of Travis. Toasty is more of a pinky nude shade. It's definitely not as dark as Travis, which is something that I like. Travis is a very dark brown, but this is a little bit lighter, so I feel like I could use this more for like every day. This formula is absolutely incredible. It's one of my favorites. It is a standard pencil that you sharpen, but it is creamy. It's not too creamy where it's slipping, but it's not, you know, tugging super dry. And then you do have a little brush on the other side of the pencil to really feather in if you'd like to do that sort of like filled in outer corners, which I love to do. I believe I have five or six shades now because I love this formula so much. I did also pick up another Refi Beauty Lip Sculpt. This is in the color Dusk. So I have three, this is my fourth one, and this looked really beautiful and different for me. I'm wearing it today mixed with the Mario and wait till you hear what lipstick I'm wearing, I'm obsessed. But this is a deeper pink. I typically don't wear pinks. I feel like they are oftentimes a little bit too bright, but this one is deep enough that I feel like it gives me a contour, which is what I like. Like, this is a drier formula, so if you like like a creamy lip liner, I would say this is probably not it. This is very long wearing, and it also has this interesting like sealant. I don't typically use it. It's almost like a silicone clear sealant. It's supposed to really lock your you know lip products in for hours, but I honestly find that this wears so well on its own that I don't use it, and I really love the colors, so this is my fourth lip liner from Refi Beauty. So now let's talk about the lipstick I'm wearing. I am instantly in love with the formula and the color, but I did grab two shades of the new Gucci liquid lipsticks. So this is brand new from them. I was so excited when I saw these. Originally I picked up Cornelia Pink because this one was sold out and I finally got my hands on Grace Cinnamon. So I am wearing Grace Cinnamon. This is my perfect peachy nude. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the packaging on these and what I like about these is they are not thick They're very very thin. So it's almost like you build them up I wouldn't say they have a moussey whipped feel to them but they just are very, very lightweight. And with that, they're not crazy drying, in my opinion. You can build it up. I would say two layers will get you full opacity. There might be like a slight scent if I actually smell it, but on the lips, there's no scent. I can be sensitive to like florals on my mouth area, and I'm not noticing that. And I haven't tried this color on yet, but this is the Cornelia Pink. I think I'm gonna like this too. They look a little bit deeper in the actual component, I think maybe because of like the frosted bottle, but these are just almost like a lip stain, liquid lipstick type of vibe. They're just soft on the lips. They're more sheer, you can build them up. That's my preference. I really don't like almost like spackle liquid lipsticks and I'm so happy that I love these shades and that they don't have a scent or a taste that's like, you know, flowers in your mouth. So I am so happy I got this and this shade in Grace Cinnamon is gonna become one of my favorites I already know. So along with those lip products, I did grab another shade of the Patrick Ta Major Volume Plumping Gloss. This formula is one of my favorites. 
It is so high shine, and I love the scent on these. There's something really unique about it. Originally, when I had heard there was almost like a cinnamon scent to it, I was like, ooh, I don't really like that. But it's a very refreshing, like, peppermint or mint cinnamon. Feels like it just really... I don't know, makes it feel like you just put a mint in. So I grabbed the shade Superficial, which is the more nude shade, and I love the feel of them. It's very cooling, almost like the Buxom glosses, but a little bit more of like a cooling effect with like a slight cinnamon. And I don't want that to scare you off because I really do not like cinnamon, you know, burning type of stuff. It's not a burning feel, it's just very cooling, refreshing, almost like you just used mouthwash, something like that. I love the texture of these. They're just super high shine. They wear beautifully. They remind me of the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Heats, but I like these even more. So I believe this is my third color now. I also picked up a repurchase of my new favorite SPF lip balm. This is incredible. This is from K Skin. This is called the Isle Lip Balm SPF 30. So when I went to Florida, I grabbed this before and I used this on vacation. This is a insanely high shine lip balm kind of gloss and it stays put on your lips. It is gorgeous. It is really just like that glass-like finish. It smells really yummy, like a vanilla type of scent and something about the formula really just hangs on. So we were on the beach for like four or five hours and this was just like coating my lips. It wasn't going anywhere and I love that it has an SPF in it. I can really get burnt lips. Like I have to make sure that I put a heavy SPF on my lips. So that's why I picked this up. And because it has this really high shine finish, it almost feels or looks like you put on a lip oil. So it's pretty, but also functional. It smells great in the price is really good. I believe it's like 14 bucks, which is a great price. So I now have two of these. I want to keep one in my car and then one in my house for when I do want to, you know, go out and lay in the sun. But this is a hidden gem. I've not heard anyone talk about this. So if you're looking for a lip balm with SPF, I highly recommend this. And to finish off this haul, I did pick up the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist Setting Mist. So I'd heard a lot of people raving about this and I don't know if I ever tried this originally. It has a really light sort of herbal scent or like spa-like scent and when I used it today I feel like it did give me a little bit of a glow but I like that it wasn't heavy. It wasn't you know, one of those sticky setting mists that give you almost like a film. It felt very light and refreshing. I wanna try this out and see if it really does lock my makeup down. I had heard people raving about it for kind of both reasons. I'm still, you know, really in love with my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, but I'd heard so many people saying that this was just like an incredible setting spray to really melt your powders in, but also lock your makeup in. So if you've tried this, let me know. I feel like I missed this somehow when Rare Beauty launched. Maybe I just didn't pick it up, but I'm excited to have it now and I'll continue to try this out and give you an update very soon. All right, guys, so it is everything for this Sephora haul. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I picked up recently. Do let me know what you've been purchasing from Sephora. What are your new favorites or what are you interested in grabbing? I will link all the products that I showed today down below in my description box. Also, don't forget to sign up to be a beauty insider. It's totally free and there's so many perks that come with it. So I will have the link down below to sign up if you haven't already. Thank you again to Sephora for sponsoring this video. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. And if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.